Hello everyone. Welcome to the online tutorial on quantum chemistry. This tutorial is meant to introduce the principles and methods in quantum chemistry to the interested viewers across the world. We will begin our journey from the historical development of quantum mechanics from an era of classical mechanics and then we will go to the formalism of quantum mechanics, its principles and applications in chemical problems. I will upload a series of videos from time to time in this video, I will give a short introduction to the idea of quantum mechanics. As I just said, quantum mechanics was evolved from classical mechanics. Obviously, there will arise a question in your mind, what's the difference between classical mechanics and quantum mechanics? A very precise answer to this question at this moment is not possible or it is difficult because we have not learned what is quantum mechanics in detail. But to begin with, I would say that while classical mechanics applies to the macroscopic world, quantum mechanics applies to the microscopic domain. This statement is not strictly correct. In fact, quantum mechanics is not only applied to the microscopic world, it also applies to the macroscopic domain also. But why do we see often that the difference between classical and quantum mechanics is like this? It is just because the manifestation of quantum mechanics is very important and visible in the microscopic world. By saying macroscopic world or macroscopic objects, what do we mean? Macroscopic objects are the objects that we feel, see and touch in our everyday life. The large objects. A bus that we are traveling every day is a macroscopic object. An apple falling from a tree, a bullet from a gun. Obviously, bullet from a gun is not something that we feel or see in our everyday life. Uh, but it's still a macroscopic object. The laws of motion of all these are governed by the laws of classical physics, the motion of all these, the motion of apple, motion of the bullet, all these are governed by the, the laws of classical physics. But why do we mean by microscopic particles? Microscopic particles means very, very, very tiny particles. For example, an electron is a microscopic particle. We know that the rest mass of electron is 9.1 times 10 raised to minus 31 kilogram. How tiny is this mass? 9.1 times 10 raised to minus 31 kilogram. We often say about 1 gram, 2 gram, 100 kilogram or 1 ton or even we say about milligrams but this is a number or this is a mass that we are not familiar with but to get a feeling of this I will say an example Earth was formed 4.5 billion years ago 4.5 billion years ago means long 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 ago and you just suppose that there was a demon on this earth from the day one and this demon is a fantastic demon why fantastic? Because he can do a fantastic job. He has a glass on his left hand and with his right hand he can collect 10 billion electrons in every second and put it in this glass. And once the electrons fall in this glass, they won't escape. Don't ask me how, I don't know how. I only know that he is a fantastic demon and he can do this job and only he can do this job. And he is doing this job from day one on this earth. He has not slept so far. He is working every day, every hour, every second. In every second he is collecting 10 billion electrons and putting in this glass. And if we go today to him and ask him how much electron you have you collected so far, he will answer just above 1 gram. See? He is collecting 10 billion electrons in every second from day one on this earth. Without any rest, he is doing this job. But so far, he has collected 
only just above one gram. So you can imagine how tiny is an electron. How small is this mass? So electron is a very, 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 very tiny particle which has a very, 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 very small mass. So this is a microscopic particle. So don't expect that the laws of classical physics applied to an apple falling from a tree is also applied to an electron falling from a higher orbit to a lower orbit. For this microscopic world, we need some other set of laws or another mechanics and that is quantum mechanics. Now let's go more specific about the differences between classical mechanics and quantum mechanics. To understand this difference, let's consider a ball over a horizontal surface. This is a horizontal surface and here is a ball at the position x0 a force F is applied on this ball obviously the ball is a macroscopic object and due to the force F the ball will start to move but it experiences friction from the surface and after a certain time T the ball will come to rest at this position xt. We can see that the ball start to move at the position x0 due to the force f with an initial momentum p and the momentum then continuously decreases and then it comes to rest where momentum is 0. And within these two positions, x0 and xt, the momentum varies continuously. It starts with a momentum p. After a certain time, for example, the momentum will be 0.7 p. And after some time, it will be 0.5 p. Then, after a certain time, it will be 0.1 p. And... 0.001 p then it comes to rest with the momentum zero the motion of this ball is governed by the laws of classical mechanics and classical mechanics doesn't put any restriction on the values of this momentum it allows continuous range of values for the momentum of this ball from the position x0 to xt now let's take the example of an electron which is a microscopic particle. Soon we will learn the quantum mechanical treatment of hydrogen atom where we will see that the orbital angular momentum of an electron is L which is equal to h by 2 pi times root of L times L plus 1 where the allowed values of L are 0, 1, 2, etc. Here we can see that the angular momentum, orbital angular momentum is determined by the values of L which are restricted to 0, 1, 2, etc. L cannot have the value between 0 and 1 means L cannot have a value like 0 0.5 or 1.3 or 2.7 etc. The values of L are restricted so the orbital angular momentum are also restricted. Here we cannot have all the continuous range of values of orbital angular momentum. In fact, quantum mechanics allows only restricted values or quantum mechanics allows only discrete values for the variables. So we have seen the example, two examples of how classical mechanics and quantum mechanics is applied to the systems while classical mechanics allows continuous range of values for the dynamic variables quantum mechanics allows discrete values so this is the 
fundamental difference between classical mechanics and quantum mechanics. Classical mechanics allows continuous range of values for the dynamic variables while quantum mechanics allows discrete values. If we are going more specific, we can find out more differences, but at this moment, I restrict the description to this level. Soon we will learn the events that led scientists to develop quantum mechanics from classical mechanics and in each occasion, we will learn how quantum mechanics is different from classical mechanics. So next step is to go through the history. History tells how the truth was unraveled. Keep watching.